Hello folks, it's David with Euro Motorcycles and today with me I have the first US spec 2022 Euro Motorcycle. I'm going to bring you all the specifications and all the details of what's changed from the last year and I'll be back with you right after this brief intro. Okay, I'm back. So for 2022 model year, there was a few changes that were implemented that were primarily driven by the Euro 5 standard that was looming over us for the last couple of years, actually the whole motorcycle industry. So um, the short list of changes is high compression pistons, new center stand, forged aluminum swing arm, two into one high pipe that is now standard, hide now tires now come standard, and there's a few other little bits and pieces I'm also going to touch on a few things as I was assembling this bike that have come out in the last couple of years, but we, we never, never really promoted it or um, talked about it. And it was prior to me doing these videos. So I'm going to go over those changes too, as they kind of fit in with some of the other things that were done this year. And uh, we'll get to them all in turn and I'll go over the whys and hows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but let's start with the piston. So the new piston design increases the compression of the Euro motor by 20%. And for what I've been told, it's now a 10 and a half to one compression ratio. The new pistons are gravity cast from NASA 388 aluminum silica alloy. They're Teflon inlaid skirts. They're hard anodized on the crown and the top ring groove. The top ring face is now inlaid with a high tech plasma sprayed molybendium. The piston rings are now machined to isometric standards, allowing for precisely calibrated end gap. We optimize the piston ring groove tolerances High precision piston machining allow one size of cylinder, so there's no longer multiple sizes like there used to be. For those of you who are familiar in the past, we used to have an A, B, and C. Now it's one piston for all cylinders all the time. The pistons also come with a phosphate coated wrist pin and circlips all together as a set. So why the higher compression ratio? Well, higher compression ratios usually mean higher engine efficiency, which equals a cleaner and more complete burn of the fuel, resulting in better mileage too. However, higher compression ratios oftentimes operate at higher pressures and that pressure creates heat. It's pretty basic knowledge, right? So the chances of knocking in the engine from pre-detonation also increase. Add the various percentages of ethanol fuel from country to country, and even here in the United States from state to state, and this is why Euro recommends using the highest octane fuel available for your area or in the area that you're traveling through. Whatever you can get, get the highest one. Now, a lot of you may think this is a change from the past. Well, actually, we always re re uh, requested that you use the highest octane fuel. But in the past, with the old carbureted models and the first generation of EFI, with the compression ratios that we were running, you could get away with lower. That's why there's kind of a myth out there in the social media and on the internet and the different Ural forums, a Ural is perfectly capable of running a low octane fuel. Well, in those cases and in those days it was, but now not so much. Today's Ural engines have so many advancements in the materials that are used to make the components and the programming with increased and more reliable performance. This is without a doubt, as I said before, the cleanest air-cooled internal combustion engine Ural has ever built. And after riding this one around today, I gotta say, it's the nicest Euro I've ever ridden. But I do wanna touch base on the fact that with the higher compression comes the higher heat. So the video I made before of the uh, best loading practices, I would strongly encourage you to go back and watch that video on the uh, segment that I talk about wind sail and load and weight and ambient temperature. Now in that video, I give some best practice tips but I will re relate again very briefly. Obviously heat can directly correlate to damage if you're not cognizant of what the motorcycle is doing. So at, at fill ups, you might wanna take an extended break, have some water for yourself, let the bike cool down, let the oil dissipate some heat out of the pan, which is what it's designed for, let the motor cool down a little bit before you get on your way. 
So moving outside of the motor and into one of the biggest changes you will notice right off the bat when you look at the bike, the low slung two and a two pipes are now gone and replaced with a two and a one high pipe that exits out the right side. The system consists of two pre-cats up front, two regular catalysts in the middle, and then a large canister, which is pretty silent. Attention was paid to the heat shields in case you do decide to have a passenger back here, the heat shield runs down nearly to the foot peg to prevent any heat buildup on the back of your leg. There's also a heat shield on top to prevent any accidental burns by touching something when you're reaching for the trunk or the spare tire or the gas can. The system operates through the right-hand right intake manifold ECM port, which provides a vacuum source. The ECU, which is located under your seat, provides a signal to the vacuum valve relay. And what it does is at startup, it closes the valve partially to generate heat in the cats to warm the, them up. So it heats up the cats and when they get up to temperature, the valve opens. So it's primarily during a startup situation is when the valve is closed. Now, if the bike is warming up and you hit the throttle, the valve will adjust based on RPM as well. Not bad. Let me bring you in a little closer here. Thought we'd move the show inside so I could show you some of the other details. So it may be a little change, but it's a change nonetheless. Uh, this is going to help with tuning if you have a carb tune and you want to ba balance your throttle bodies. So previously, the intake manifolds had a little tiny Allen screw with a sealing washer on them. So this year we ended up putting a little barb on there with a rubber cap and on, on the right hand side it's actually got a hose going to it which sends a signal to the exhaust system like we talked about before. But on the left side where the cap is, even the cap um, went through new design which doesn't seem like a lot but the rubber component uh, we actually tested and developed a rubber compound which would be extremely resistant to the ethanol fuels. So it won't break down and get a, a fracture or anything that would uh, result in a vacuum leak causing poor runnability that you may not see right off the bat. It uh, doesn't mean that they won't age, but uh, they, they will be resistant to a lot of the chemicals that are currently uh, being used in gasoline and last a lot longer than uh, some other rubber would have. What does this small change mean for you? Well, basically it just means a tool is uh, balancing for your throttle bodies if you have a carb tune and you won't have to buy adapters or screw in a little brass fitting to get the hoses on. Here's an improvement for 2022 that I'm really impressed with. What we did was we separated the old caliper and mechanical parking brake into two different systems. So it's got a Brembo two piston caliper now on a forged steel bracket. Now the forged steel brackets, uh, we've had these out for a couple years now and it wasn't really promoted like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So if you look on the rear and the front, the front uh, uh, caliper carrier, that is actually a forged bracket too. Infinitely better than the old way of doing things where it was laser cut steel with bungs welded on it was a multi-step process at the, at the factory and then it had to be powder coated. Now these are all forged, tapped, threaded, ready to go uh, by the time they receive them at the factory. Yeah, it's a much stronger, much prettier looking um, product that doesn't lead to alignment issues even though they use a jig at the factory to weld these items up. Oftentimes, you know, there can be a slight variance and it might be hard to get a, a bolt started. The other interesting thing to note that I found out after the bike arrived 
was that this has got eight buttons now, uh, increasing the number of buttons from previous discs. And the thickness is actually uh, a Ural spec thickness that is proprietary to us. So the adapter needed to be changed to accommodate the, um, the new rotor. And that spacer or adapter is going to be the one that comes on the rear spare tire now. So primarily the, the flat that you will uh, get most of the time when you're out running around will be on the pusher tire. Rarely is it the front, rarely is it the sidecar. So the sidecar, the, the spare wheel will be set up to take this rotor off, put the, the spare, uh, this rotor on the spare and put that on your bike immediately. It will still interchange with the front and with the rear, but uh, you're gonna have to take off the spacers and the rotor for that particular wheel, for that particular placement and adapt uh, and bolt that onto the hub to make it fit one of those locations. The other cool thing about separating these out is the new cables and the parking brake, which is supplied by J1. They also supply our braided brake lines and they actually supply uh, many motorcycle manufacturers with a lot of components. Go look at new bikes on showroom floors. You're going to see their name on several items. Now it's a toolless adjustment change. You can literally take the tension off with your finger and move this to change the tension. There's no more tool uh, adjustments needed to increase or decrease the brake tension for your parking brake. So those of you that watch my YouTube channel on the regular, you know the old center stand was one of the banes of my existence. Um, so I gotta say, the improvement with the new center stand is absolutely incredible. It, uh, it's, uh, the new design makes it easier to lift and lower safely. It's, it doesn't rock around. It doesn't feel like it's gonna fall forward on you. It's a really, really nice design. And interestingly enough, the crossbar that goes over to the other side to tie the two legs together uh, creates basically a little uh, protective bar that goes right under the exhaust tube. So if by chance, even though the new exhaust system increases the ground clearance, if by chance something was to roll up under there, a good likelihood is that it's gonna hit the bar on that uh, the um, center stand first and not damage the exhaust. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it sure looks like it was intended to be a protective device as well as help with the stability of the new design. Incredible, incredible um, ease of deployment. Um, and in fact, uh, now this is not the same lift of the, uh, of the bike, from three different angles with three different cameras because I don't have three different cameras. This is three different times to show you how easy it is without me getting fatigued and my back hurting. You ready? Here's number one. Number two. And finally, number three. Super easy. In fact, it's so easy to use my boss, Ilya, is able to lift the bike up on the center stand now, <clears throat> where in the past he couldn't. So uh, smaller stature people, people with uh, uh, limited lifting capacity, I think you're gonna find it easier to get the bike up on the center stand now. Now here's an interesting one that I saw when I was assembling this bike, but the factory didn't say anything. So I inquired about it and I found out the answer. But what it was was these these gussets here on the sidecar frame, they literally beefed up the frame and didn't say anything to anybody. Maybe because to them it just wasn't a big deal. But I saw it, so I thought I would bring it up to you. So the answer I got was that the factory guys, they go out to Dotbaugh Pass every year for like three or four days and they just beat the heck out of their bikes.
and they invite guests. They're like the guys from Motul went last year. If you haven't watched that video, it's on our YouTube channel. I will link that in the description below. It's incredible to see what those bikes go through. Already super tough, super thick steel sidecar frame, and they're just uh, beefing it up as, uh, as needed based on their own testing and destruction. So Dotloff Pass tested and proven. Talking about things that we either overlook or don't really publicize or don't promote, the rubber suspension component here that is on the sidecar, the rear of the sidecar body, um, those got an upgrade about maybe a year or two ago where they started putting springs inside. Now it's a stainless steel spring um, and it slips into the old rubber member. Uh, but when I was assembling this, I was reminded that uh, they are doing that now and I had completely forgotten about it. So if your bike has sagging or uh, bouncy suspension that, from an older bike or um, you need to replace one. You might want to see if the springs are inside and if not uh, I know that you can go to a dealer or service center and order the spring for like older sacked out rubber members You can actually put the spring inside to help give it a, a little bit of new life or if you're buying replacements Make sure you get the newest ones off of 2021. They will retrofit to the older Urals and it'll give you a little bit more suspension support one of the other changes that was made was to the rear strut. Now down on the bottom, they changed the uh, mounting point from what was a welded tab like exists on the front still to a cast steel piece that has two bolts that literally clamp it to the frame. Now, I was told that this was done for strength and durability and a straighter shot from the bike to the sidecar frame to increase with the rigidness Again, from the uh, Dotloff Pass experience, this was one of the changes that they made. But a side effect of that that I noticed was with the new exhaust, and I don't know if it was intentional or not, but with the new exhaust, the rear foot peg with the rear strut moved forward slightly on the lower mounting point, you can actually fit your foot on the rear foot peg if you have a passenger behind you a lot easier without burning yourself on the exhaust and without interfering with the rear strut. It gives you a little bit more of a straighter shot for somebody to put their leg down there, put their foot on the footrest and be comfortable. Now, some of you observant people may have noticed that my bike here that's representative of the 2022 spec isn't 100%. It's about maybe 98, 99% complete. What I'm missing is the new forged aluminum swing arm. When this bike was built and shipped from the factory, um, they didn't have the forged swing arms in stock to send on this bike. So my, my bike had the, has the standard front swing arm. Now I do have an example and I have Nick's bike that I will bring around in a second. So this is the 3D printed model that was the basis of the design a couple years ago. It took a couple years to uh, approve the design, tool up, and get them forged and uh, eventually sent to the factory. So these will be included on all 2022 model bikes. Uh, what it does is it replaces the smaller bearing that's in the leg now, which is a, it's actually two single row bearings. And it, it's now replaced with a much larger single two row bearing with the pivot point uh, still remaining the same. So you're getting a bigger bearing and the leg, the bottom leg is gonna change as I'll show you on Nick's bike. See the bottom leg is changed here. Um, instead of the leg going into a bracket on the swing arm, now it's a bracket on the leg that goes over the swing arm. So a forged aluminum front swing arm replacing the tubular steel version, which is many, many pieces. Uh, you get tubing that's bent and formed and plates that are cut and welded onto the tubing. It's a multi-step process, and even though it's done in a jig, it can result in misalignment issues with the, with the axles and things of that nature. So we've eliminated that with a single forged aluminum front swing arm that is much stronger and much more accurate with a new axle design. And now in 2022, even though it's a little thing, we're going to be including these leather key fobs that were accessories before. Those are gonna come standard with the bike. All the badging will be black 
instead of silver like it is now, including the two-wheel drive on the trunk. And lastly, a few years ago, the CT was outfitted with Heidnau German engineered sidecar tires as standard. Well, now the Gear Up is also getting the Heidnau tires, sidecar specific tires made in Germany. The K37 Nobby tire is now gonna come equipped on the bikes as standard. So that's gonna wrap up this video. That's the changes for 2022. I hope it was informative. I hope you learned something. There are a few other changes coming, but I'm gonna stay tight-lipped about those right now. I encourage you to check out our website frequently over the next couple of weeks. We've got some exciting color changes and a few model lineup changes. So go to imz-ural.com and stay tuned for those. Currently, we have some pictures of this bike out there, uh, as well as the, the, the changes that I mentioned. And there's a little bit more information on fuel economy and uh, things of that nature. But yeah, check out the website and keep checking it out for uh, the rest of the 2022 launch. And I'll talk to you next time. Molly Bendium. <laughs>